It is the end of April here in Minnesota and our first goat is due to kid basically any day. She's due a couple days ago. And it's really important to know what signs to look for when your goat is gonna kid. Just because they have due dates doesn't mean that they're always gonna have their babies on their due dates. It's a lot like humans in that way. They can go before or after and it's really totally normal depending on the goat. Especially with our girl here, she's a first time freshener so it's not unusual at all for her to go a little bit long. I'm Kelsey from RoughandTumbleFarmhouse.com where every single week I share videos about farming, family food, and for here on our five acre homestead in northern Minnesota. I thought I would film her leading up to her delivery, kind of showing you her body, how it's changing, some things you can look for in terms of expecting a baby to arrive. Now your goat may or may not show signs as obviously as she does, but the things that I'm pointing out are pretty typical signs that you can look for when a baby is gonna be coming. So we're just gonna take a look at her body here a little bit. So here on the back end, we're taking a look at her udder. Really not that full yet. Uh, there's still definitely a lot of room. You can tell she doesn't have milk dripping out or anything. Her teats aren't really full. Going up a little bit, we can look her vulva isn't really puffy at all. There's no discharge happening. Those are all signs you look for when babies are coming soon. I'm looking here too to see kind of the curve of her back. And then most importantly, I'm feeling for her ligaments that are right here. So there's two ligaments that run on either side of their tail, almost kind of like a peace sign. They're about as thick as pencils. And if they're still there, then you've still got some time before baby's gonna come. So this is two days later and there's not a ton of change, but she is starting to change a little bit. Just a shot here of her backside. Things are starting to look a little looser. Her bag is filling out a little bit more, not much, but where I am noticing the difference, and unfortunately you can't tell, is right here things are starting to feel looser. I can still feel her ligaments there, but things are definitely starting to loosen up a little. So I'll probably come check on her again tonight, see how much she has changed. And I would expect in the next day, maybe two at most, that we should have some babies here. How huh, sweet pea? Okay, so it is one day later. I'm not making her get on her milk stand today because I believe today is the day. As soon as I came out, I saw how kind of arched she looks here in the back. And now her tail, you can just kind of see, is you just got sort of that, that arch shape and her tail's kind of sticking up and not going down. And when I feel right here, there's really, there's not much happening there at all. The ligaments are pretty much completely gone. When I come back around here and look at her hind end, she's starting to look a little bit puffy and her bag is definitely filled out a lot. So I'm thinking today, maybe a little bit later today is gonna be our day. Well, I've been hoping to show you the whole birthing process and the signs leading up to the babies being born. But as you can maybe tell, I missed it. I was gonna come down at about one o'clock but I need to get my own two daughters down for a nap. And lo and behold, when I got down here at 1.30, she had just pushed out her second one. So she had two little bucklings here. I was really hoping, oh mama, I was really hoping for at least one doling because she's my favorite doe, but um, here they are. So even though I didn't catch it with Sweet Pea, I wanted to show you what some other signs are. This is actually Sweet Pea's mom in labor with Sweet Pea and her sister. They might lift their head up and kind of back over their body when they're having contractions. It's kind of a pain response. They also might grind their teeth. It's something else that goats do when they are feeling pain. You can also see really here that curve that happens and you can see how sunken in she gets also kind of right above where the babies are. Another sure sign that babies aren't far behind. Moms may also sniff around a lot. Here our doe really was interested in our cat Gary who liked to always be present at births. So they might sniff around, they might start pawing quite a bit, other signs that baby's coming. It's also totally normal for the moms to stretch, to lay down, to get up and down a lot. If you've ever had an unmedicated labor yourself, you know that trying different positions oftentimes feels better. And here you can see, once you start seeing a bag actually coming out of your goat, the babies are coming. There you can even see the nose a little bit peeking out. 
And here are actually the results of that labor. This is actually Sweet Pea on the left, with a little tail wagging, and her sister Honeybee, when she was just a baby born in the very same barn. Oh my gosh, she's so little, I can hardly stand it. So the good news is both babies have been up and have been eating. Mom <laughs> seems to be pretty stable. She's being a really great mom. I was a little worried about that because her mother was not a good mom. That's why we actually got rid of her mother. My husband had to hold her still so we could get her first kids she ever had to latch. And then when she had her second kids, <laughs> while we had her, she was a very reluctant mother and she completely rejected her buckling and only would take care of her doling. So I ended up just pulling both kids and milking her myself <laughs> and then we sold her because I don't have time for bad moms. Uh, but Sweet Pea here, who has been my favorite goat for a long time, has been an excellent mom. She took to her babies right away. Both of them have nursed, had help out a little bit, but they both nursed to their heart's content and have good full bellies and now they're just laying and resting under the heat lamp. So all has gone well. <laughs> The one small hitch in the whole situation is it worked out that my husband was working from home today so he was able to watch our girls when they woke up from their nap and he came down to check on me and I said I just need another like half hour so I can make sure the babies are latching and everything and then you can go back to work. Well, if you've watched my YouTube channel for a while then you may have also watched the video I made on making a Dutch style door and that is the little shed that I'm currently in. Uh, it's a little, um, it's a little red kind of woodshed type thing that's that's the coziest place that we have on our farm for a goat to have kids. Well, once the babies were latched and good and I thought, okay, I'm gonna head back in now so my husband can go back to work, he has locked me in the goat barn. So I'm gonna set a timer and see how long it is till he figures out that uh, I'm just stuck out here. I have this small tool that I randomly found, a little piece of wire from somewhere on the wall that I've been trying to jimmy my way uh, through the door. I really don't think it's going to happen. So hopefully it's not a super long time. I mean, the positive thing is I can go without food and water for quite a while. I absolutely have to pee. There's plenty of bedding around I can just pee in. So uh, I'll let you know at the end of this video how long it took before my husband realized he had in fact locked me inside of our goat shelter. <laughs> it's been about an hour and I'm still locked in the goat kidding shed. Babies are still good, moms are still good, they're napping. Um, I've tried every little tool I think I can. I cannot get through the small holes, they're just not big enough. And even if I wanted to break the board, which I was like, well I guess I can always patch this. I I, it's like it's a solid old like aged board, I'm not, I'm not getting through that board. So there's a loft up here. I thought about climbing up there and seeing if there's some sort of long forgotten tool. I feel like MacGyver in here trying to make this happen. Um, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to get the door open, which is really, says a lot about me and how great of a job I did in, in making this door uh, do a good job of keeping animals inside, uh, considering the fact that this human can't get out. I mean, if it really gets desperate, I think I could if I really needed to bust the top part of the door, but I really don't want to because we need that door and I don't have time to fix it. So what I'm gonna try now is I'm attaching a, <laughs> a used puppy pad covered in placenta and thing to a piece of twine and I'm gonna try and stick it out the top of the door and hope that that might look weird enough that it catches his attention. I don't know how many of you who are watching this are married women, not that this is a gendered thing, but the odds of him Seeing something weird like that and thinking maybe I should go investigate are pretty slim But other than that, we're basically just waiting each other out at this point um, So we'll see We'll see he does we do eat dinner around five uh, And it is his birthday dinner tonight, which I have thank God I prepared everything in advance because I shouldn't be making it right now so by around five o'clock he's gonna start to get hungry and uh, Will probably come looking for me then so, we're just gonna hang tight. <laughs> <laughs>